In this video, we are going to be covering Taylor's square root of time fitting method. So um, as we've mentioned before, there are two curve fitting methods when you want to determine the coefficient of consolidation. Uh, the first is the uh, Casagrande's log of time method, and this one is the second, Taylor's square root of time method. So let's talk about how we do this. Uh, basically what you do is you plot dial readings versus the square root of time, okay? So you're gonna get time data and then you're gonna you know, make another column and, and take the square root of that and maybe in an Excel spreadsheet. And then what we do is we draw a straight line through the initial part of the curve. And then what we do is we project this to the dial reading axis. The point on the dial reading axis that the line intersects is labeled R naught. And then what we do is we draw a second line from that R naught value that we just determined with abscissas of 1.15 times the values of the first line. Now, um, just to be clear, the this word here, abscissa, an abscissa is just the mathematical uh, word for x-axis values or horizontal axis values or uh, independent variable value uh, values. So um, an abscissa is just basically a value that's along the horizontal axis of your, of your plot, okay? Um, so where this line, where this line, this second line, Uh, intersects the data curve defines R90 and square root of T90. Now, remember the, the subscript 90 represents 90% 90 consolidation, okay? And so from uh, from a time factor handout, we know capital T90 is 0.848. So then what you can do is you can say the coefficient of consolidation, you use the 90% uh, consolidation data and you say CV equals T90 times HDR squared over little t90 okay and so of course this would be 0.848 hdr squared over little t90 and remember the horizontal axis is is square root of time so if you want to get little t90 you've got to take this square root of t90 value that you obtain from the data and you square it okay so let's take a a look at how this would be graphically all right so 
let's say that we have our dial reading axis here, and then we have square root of time here. So again, you're gonna be given time data, you take the square root of it, okay? And then let's say that, you know, the data looks, you know, something like this, okay? And you're gonna connect the data points, okay? And uh, what do the directions say? It says, uh, draw a straight line through the initial part of the curve, okay? So that's gonna be roughly right here, the initial part of the curve, okay? And you wanna make that as straight as possible. So, you know, you use a straight edge if you're doing it by hand or, or um, you know, use a line tool um, on, on Excel or Word, okay? And we wanna project this back to, until it intersects the, uh, oops, what happened here? There we go. Project it back until it intersects the R axis, okay? And so this is R naught. And then uh, what you do is you draw a second line from that R naught point with abscissas of 1.15 times the values of the first line. So here's what I do. I extend this until it hits this uh, value right here. So we can just call this, you know, square root of T sub A maybe, okay? And then what you do is you take a second line, you start at R naught, and you extend this down, straight line, until you hit this value here, which should be 1.15 square root of T sub A, okay? So you've, you've basically, so what I do numerically is I'll take this, this value right here and I'll just multiply it by 1.15 and uh, that will get me this value. And then what you could do is kind of go backwards. You could extend it from here back up to R naught, okay? So either way, um, either way, you know, if, if this distance, for example, is maybe distance D, then this distance should be 1.15 times D, okay? And then, um, again, the point that, that uh, the second line intersects right here, the curve, if you project this over horizontally, this is R90. And if you project this down, then where it intersects the square root of T axis, that's square root of T90. And then of course you say T90 equals that number square root of T90 squared, okay? And there you got T90. And that's pretty much how you do Taylor's square root of time method. So that's gonna conclude this video.